What's up guys and welcome back to the DIY HVAC Guy YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Dave and today we're going to be replacing a gas furnace as well as the air conditioning uh, part of it. So this first video will be part one of three. So today we're going to show you how to replace the gas furnace and how to install the coil as well as how to build the transition from the coil to the existing ductwork. Now I want to show you something real quick before we get into this install. If you look under this brand new coil, a lot of people say you have to extend this six inches above the furnace, but the reality of it is all Goodman equipment comes with this metal cover that makes sure that the um, drain pan is not going to get too hot. So there's nothing wrong with setting this coil right on top, sealing it up and we'll have a nice finished look. So that will prevent us from having to build two transitions. So we'll just have the transition from here to the existing ductwork. So let's get to work and get our old furnace ripped out and show you how to put this new one in. All right guys, so this is our furnace that we're working with. Um, it's a 60,000 BTU furnace. And as you can see, the, uh, the EVAP coil has seen better days. It's got some loose tape up here. So we're gonna make that nice and pretty. Um, so to start this project, we wanna make sure that we're being safe. We're going to be replacing this old valve with a brand new one. So we're gonna go outside and shut off our gas, get this replaced. And then we're going to also shut off the breaker for our power. And we're going to make sure that there's no power to this while we're working and no gas as well. So let's go outside and get our gas turned off. All right, so we're out here at the gas um, meter. And uh, this one is kind of interesting. I wanted to show you, I don't know why they have this locked, but if you want to zoom in here, they just have like a piece of angle iron um, locked in place. So basically what we're just going to make sure is that right now this flat tab is pointed up and down. It's parallel with this pipe. Now, if you'll notice, once I start turning this, we're gonna make sure that that is perpendicular with this pipe. So our gas is shut off. We'll go back down to the furnace and we can uh, replace that gas valve. All right, so now that we have our gas turned off outside, we're going to disconnect our gas line going to the furnace. Now you might have a flex line or you might have a union that's solid, but we're gonna disconnect that from this main gas supply. We're gonna replace the gas valve then we can restore gas once this is replaced and turned to the off position and we can relight our water heater. So we're going to start by removing this flex. Tight. And then I might actually just remove this whole thing as one piece since we're getting rid of it. So we're just going to grab it up here. I'm going to twist this guy just like that. Easy peasy. So our gas valve will be here now. Then we'll have our flex joint and our drip leg right here at the furnace. So we'll go ahead and get our pipe dope put on this guy. Now you may have seen this before, but um, we talked about the advantage of this blue pipe dope versus the white stuff. This stuff is a lot less messy than the white stuff and uh, it's easier to clean up once you have your fittings uh, joined. And it works just as good as the other stuff. So you just want to make sure you have a good even coat on all of your threads. Now we'll go ahead and do the same thing but in reverse order. I'm just going to make sure this pipe doesn't move here. You don't need to go 
full He-Man on this. Just get it um, to where it's pretty snug. You don't have to get these like crazy tight. Otherwise you might actually strip the threads on it. So we'll clean these up and then we can actually go back outside and turn our gas back on and then we can relight our water heater and proceed. Now, uh, one thing to note when you go to turn the gas back on is you want to avoid doing this too fast and hearing this diaphragm shut because you could actually mess up the diaphragm in here. So we're just gonna do this real slow until that tab is parallel, just like it was when we had it, dis uh, when we turned it off. So again, um, when we turn the gas back on, we want to relight our water heater. So just making a note of where the setting was and going through that procedure. If you're not sure how to do that, look at some of my other furnace replacement videos and you'll see the procedure on how to relight a water heater. Let's go ahead and shut off our power. We're also going to go to the breaker box and we're going to shut off the actual breaker for the furnace because we never want to trust that the switch is fully turning the power off here. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so we always want to verify that we don't have any power here. So we're going to be using a contactless um, hot pen. Now, if you look over here, there's a wire that goes to something else here. We're just going to verify that this pen works. It shows that a wire is live. And we're just going to duplicate that here at our power to our furnace. We have zero power to any of these wires, including our neutral. So we are good to proceed and pull our electrical out. So to access the electrical in here, we're going to take our covers off. Now our electrical is behind this little box here. So we're going to take that off, disconnect our wires, and then we'll pull that whole box and everything off of the furnace. If you want to zoom in here, something that's not up to code that we'll be fixing is we see this wire just goes straight in here. These units will vibrate and there's a potential here for this wire to make contact with the case of the cabinet. So to prevent that, what we're actually going to use are these. These are just snap-in bushings and I'll show you what they look like. They will snap in that hole and prevent any wires from making contact with that sharp edge. Okay, so let's go ahead and pull all these wire nuts off. Better yet, to make this easier, I'm actually just gonna cut this right here. And then we'll just loosen this lock nut for our connector here. And lastly, we're gonna disconnect the nuts that are fastening this box to the furnace. All right, so everything is removed electrical wise for our 110 power. So we got all of our uh, connections taken off here. We're simply gonna slide this old conduit out. Now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna actually install a junction box up here. And then we're gonna have new metal clad wiring. It's already flexible conduit, metal conduit, and it has the wire inside of it. So we'll show you how to do that. But for now, we're just gonna set this aside here, kind of get it out of our way. And next we'll move on to the thermostat wiring. So we'll disconnect all these wires down here at our control board. So when you get down here to the thermostat wiring, um, you'll probably see a bunch of wires. Don't be intimidated. Um, they're pretty straightforward. So you'll probably see two different ones here. Now this smaller one that just has two wires coming out these are the two wires that are gonna go to our condensing unit. And the larger one here, this one is going up to your thermostat. And this communicates with the furnace to tell it what to do. Now, starting from the left here, we have our W wire, which is, that's for your call for heat. So that white is coming from the thermostat. 
our R wire is red and that's our constant 24 volt supply. So it gives constant power to the thermostat. Green is typically G, as you can see here. That is for your fan control. So if you wanna run your fan by itself, you need to have a green wire connected. And then C, you'll notice that there's two wires connected here. We'll go ahead and disconnect these. The C that comes from your condensing unit, that is gonna be your common for the condensing unit, 24 volts. And the blue wire that goes to your thermostat is also common. So that's kind of like a neutral. And you kind of need that for a smart thermostat or a thermostat that you don't wanna to have to replace the batteries in. And blue is typically for your C wire. Now lastly, our W1, that is for our call for cool. So this wire from the condensing unit tells it when to come on. So when you go to the thermostat and bump the thermostat into cool mode, this wire tells the condensing unit to kick on. The yellow wire tells the furnace fan to come on at the same time as the condensing unit so that you will have air conditioning. Now, once we connect these, we're gonna clean these all up and make them look nice, but they're pretty straightforward. And again, we'll show you how to wire it up on the new furnace as well. So let's go ahead and pull these out of the case here and get them out of our way. Next, we're gonna work on our condensate drain. Um, all of this is gonna be replaced. So we're just gonna cut this our pipe cutters it's drained out and we'll disconnect our venting just one screw there <clears throat> so because we are doing a full replacement we need to pump all of the refrigerant into the condensing unit so that we can remove that coil from inside that's above the furnace and we won't have to deal with any refrigerant in the lines. Now, the easiest method to do this is by using the compressor to pump all of the Freon into the condensing unit. So I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. So we're gonna start by removing the valve cover on the uh, low side. The low side will be the larger line. It's probably a three quarter or seven eighths line. And we're just gonna connect our blue line here. And that's all we have to connect to do this procedure. Now I'll preface what we're about to do by saying, if your condensing unit is not working, if the compressor does not work, this method will not work and you need to pull the refrigerant into a recovery tank. But if your system is still working and you're just doing an upgrade like what we're doing here, you can definitely use the existing compressor to pump all of the refrigerant into this unit and contain it into this unit and then disconnect it from the house. Okay, so now that we have our low line connected to this large uh, pipe, some of these will be on the outside. This is an older condenser, so the valve connections are here on the inside, but more than likely yours will be out here and you won't have to take any of these covers off. So the next part that we're gonna do is we're gonna remove these nuts here now these are the king valves and they separate the refrigerant from the unit to the line set that goes into our inside portion. And so from the factory, these are turned all the way in, not allowing any refrigerant to go past these two valves. In my past videos, you'll probably notice that when we install the new unit, after we pull the vacuum, we open these and that's what allows the refrigerant to go into the lines. So we're basically gonna be doing the reverse of that. We're going to close these valves after our refrigerant is pumped into the unit. And so all of the refrigerant will be contained to the unit. What we're gonna do is we're gonna close off the high side all the way. So we're gonna close this until it's fully seated and snug that up. So that's fully seated. Next, we're gonna go over to the low side and we're gonna do the same thing, except 
we're gonna close it all the way and then we're gonna back this off about 10 of these little rotations so that we're still allowing a little bit of refrigerant to pass through the suction side. Now the suction side is labeled that because the compressor pulls the Freon through this suction line and it forces it out as a liquid through this side. So what we're gonna do now that it's seated, we're gonna back it off just a few turns like this. And now what that's gonna allow us to do is we're gonna use the compressor to pull all of the refrigerant that's in the evaporator coil through the suction line and it'll stack inside the condensing unit coils and it won't have anywhere to go. And we'll monitor this on our gauges. Once we hit zero, we'll go ahead and close this down all the way. So we're gonna leave this in here ready to go. Now, there's a couple of ways that we can energize the compressor. We can go inside and we can turn the thermostat down and turn the AC on. Uh, the method that I use, and just make sure you're being extra safe, um, I'll use a insulated screwdriver or a nut driver like this one. And what we can actually do is just press this little tab in on our contactor. And if you're doing this live, just make sure that you have an insulated handle. I'd hate for anyone to get electrocuted. Um, if you don't wanna fool with this, just go inside and turn the AC on and then monitor your gauges down here until you're at zero and then we'll close this off. So we're gonna duplicate this by just pressing this in with our nut driver. All right, so we see our gauges are dropping on the low side. We're gonna wait for that to get to zero. And we're gonna shut this valve down. there. All right, we're at zero, so we're gonna crank this down until we're fully seated. And that's it. So all of our Freon is now contained to this condensing unit and we can proceed with uh, disconnecting our coil inside. And it's as easy as that. Since we're just replacing the furnace today, we're gonna be replacing this condensing unit tomorrow. So there will be a, maybe a little bit of refrigerant in this line. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and cut this line. And instead of having refrigerant leak out into the home, we're just gonna cut this line outside first, and then we can remove our coil inside. So we're just spinning this a little bit on this knob, rotating it, spinning it a little bit more, and it'll slowly cut through this copper line. That's it. So there was actually nothing in there. So. We're good to uh, get our coil removed and replace our furnace. So next, since we have our venting and our condensate drain done, we're gonna go ahead and cut our refrigerant lines. All right, so our lines are cut. We're just gonna pull this uh, wire from our condenser and we'll just move this over here. So next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna disassemble this box that they made. And we're gonna get all of this sheet metal removed and our old coil taken out. Well, that was easy. All right, so we got our coil removed. And as you can see inside here, there's zip screws from the inside. So we're gonna take all these zip screws out and we're gonna remove all of this ductwork up to this point. Um, we may need to take some additional off, but once we measure our furnace, actually our furnace is sitting right here. We might have a little transition, but it won't be super big. 
So let's go ahead and remove all of these. All right. Not too bad. So the last thing we need to do is separate the return duct from the furnace. So go ahead and pull our filter out. I believe this one is held in place with these S cleats. Should be as simple as tapping this down right here. Easy as that. Sometimes you'll have the ductwork or the filter rack bent and you'll have to remove these little tabs. But this one just has two S cleats, it looks like. And then it looks like we've got three zip screws here. Once we get these taken off, we should be able to pull this old furnace out. All right, looks like we're good to go. Uh, what we need to do is open up the side <coughs> and what we're going to have is this filter rack so this will be a lot easier than using the other system now what we're going to have to do to make this work is we'll need to adjust this we'll build a little piece of sheet metal so this is our filter rack that we were just showing you and this is the cutout on the side of our furnace as you can see, it's the same exact dimensions, 16 by 25. So we're gonna start by removing this whole piece right here. And what we're gonna do to start, we're just gonna poke a hole in the corner. And that way we have a starting point for our turbo shears. Now these are really cool. Um, they're about 50 bucks and they make cutting out stuff like this very easy. And you'll see how quickly we can do this. So next what we're gonna do is fit our new filter rack nice and flush so in order to make bending uh, these t this tab over this easier what we're going to do is we're just going to cut a few notches here and we're just going to go all the way around set this in place and we're just going to start bending these in place. All right, so we're just going to go back through and we're just going to fully pinch all of these. Make sure that it's fully seated against the furnace. And that's it. So we're done with that portion. Next, we're just going to make sure that this adapts to our new ductwork. And one thing that will measure the opening of the uh, return air but we'll have a little strip right here. So we're gonna build a little piece of sheet metal and put that there. So I'm gonna go ahead and straighten that out. All right, so we got our filter rack in place. Everything is really solid after we uh, crimped it with uh, this tool. I just went ahead and ran some tape around uh, the edges just to make sure everything is good and sealed. We have a piece of metal here. 
So this should adapt well to our new, um, or to our existing ductwork. So let's go ahead and slide it in. They don't work. Oh man, look at that. Just look at it. You can't run any screws here because that will interfere with our filter. So we're just gonna tape that, but we're gonna fold this tab over here with these guys. Look how good that looks. So good. I'm just gonna run three zip screws going to the outside there. And then we're gonna fold this down. All right, so that turned out really nice. Um, we've got this bent over here with our, uh, with our handy dandy bender tools. And then same on the top. And then we're zip screwed to the back there. And there's a little opening in the corner there. So what we're about to uh, do is use our pookie to seal that up. This stuff is great for things like that. So we'll get that sealed up and then our return air will be completely done. Put this front piece back on and then we'll get started on the supply. All right, so our return is done. We'll go ahead and slide our filter in here and then we'll put that piece back on and we'll move on to the next step. Just like that. Now, one thing that I do um, for all of my customers is when I put this back on, I'll draw an arrow right here pointing towards the furnace. A lot of my customers don't know what this arrow is for and they have it in backwards. So having an arrow on here helps them out a little bit. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do now that our filter is done, we have our little uh, arrow there and all this is sealed so they won't accidentally pull that up. It's not really used anymore. So the next thing we're going to do is pull our top cover off and we're going to go ahead and get our gas set up. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and remove this. This guy will go on the top. drop sound at me. <laughs> yeah. So this piece will go on the top right here, but we're not going to set it in place yet because we still have to fit our evaporator coil. So we're just going to set that aside. Now, um, pretty much what we're going to do here is we're going to do a 90 out straight to here. We're going to have our drip leg and then we're going to have our flex line going to here. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> I'm not doing it. Now the purpose of this is so that any debris, if they're working on the gas line, dirt and stuff can get in the lines. And this will allow a place for that debris to go to and prevent it from getting into your gas valve. So it'll look something like that. So let's go ahead and put our pipe dope on and permanently install these pieces. All right, so we are ready for our flex line. <clears throat> so <clears throat> the flex lines come with these uh, flare ends. So we're gonna go ahead and get our pipe dope put on here.
nice and symmetrical. Just clean this up. Make sure everything looks nice. Turn our gas on. And now we'll get our um, leak detector spray. We'll spray all this down and make sure that there is zero leaks. So next we're gonna start on our electrical. Uh, you probably remembered we pulled that old solid conduit out. Now what we're gonna do is we just have this uh, bare wire up until here where we have it still wrapped. Now we're gonna feed this into our box and we're using one of these little isolator uh, fittings. So once we get this all the way through, our Romix um, shielding will actually be what's pinched here and that will keep that wire from ever having any movement. Looks like that. So now we're gonna mount this box here. We're gonna clamp our Romix to where it's uh, clamped and won't have any movement or any exposure to any raw edges. And then we'll have our quick connect uh, metal clad wiring that will run down here to our box. All right, you don't, want, you don't want to get these too tight, just snug to where they're not moving. So now we can go ahead and clip these to the proper length. Okay, so we're just gonna give ourselves a few inches here. So we got our 12-2 metal clad uh, cable. Now this is already built in. This is a 10 foot section. I think you can get these in six foot, but they're very easy to use. So literally we just have our knockout here on the other side of the box. Just feed this through. And this thing will just pop into place and that's literally all we have to do. Just like that. So it locks into place, it's not moving, it's shielded from any sharp edges, and then we can simply make our connections there. So now that we have our box mounted, um, I'm gonna come back and put some plugs here, but we just have that taped. If this was a brand new box, you would just knock out where you need the knockouts. So I have one knockout here, so the wires will go straight through. And then I have another knockout right here, and that's where this quick connect is going to go. But we need to cut this to length, so I wanted to show you how to cut this metal clad. So you just bend it like this, pull it a little bit, and then you can make your cut where you need to without having to damage any wires. I'm just gonna go in with some snips cut it, should be able to pull this straight off like that. So now for this guy, what we're just gonna do is twist and pull, and that will pull this out and allow us to reuse this. Just lock it in place like that. And we're just gonna feed it through our knockout hole there. Just gonna lock it into place here like that so we're locked in i'm gonna put another fastener i'll be right there and then we're good to make our connections here and put our switch in all right so when you're doing your uh, wiring and you're hooking it up to the switch, you can do two options. You can wrap it around this, which is not advisable with these stranded wires. Um, but with this one, what we actually did was, I'll show you on this neutral. We just stripped it back about maybe three quarters of an inch. And then we used this hole right here on the side of the wire strippers to bend a 180 degree bend there. Now, when you put this on the screw, you want it to bend around so that as you're tightening the screw, it's not gonna be pushing the wire back out. It's gonna keep it in place. As you can see, there was no movement there. So that being said, we're gonna put our uh, wire connector on here instead of just wrapping this around. 
it has two prongs it'll just slide in and then we'll tighten that down we'll connect our neutrals together in this uh, junction box and then we should be good to go to put our switch back in all right so before uh, we wrap this up i just wanted to show you an awesome uh, means of connecting wires we're going to be using these they're called uh, wago lever nuts so they replace wire nuts and basically you can use this with a stranded wire just slide it in and lock it in place as well as a solid wire so those other stab connectors that you can use for solid wire you can't use with stranded and that's an advantage to using these wagos so if you need help finding uh, those uh, lever nuts um, just go to the video description down under this video you'll see my amazon store there click on it and then there will be a specific section for the wago lever nuts that, there you can find different varieties these are the two connector they have three four and even five wire connectors so i forgot to show this uh, when we installed this but this is the bushing that protects our main power wires from ever rubbing against raw metal and uh, these are what they look like. I'll put these in the video description as well so that you can pick up some of those. All right, so the last thing that we had to do is hook up our ground wire. You can choose to use a wire connector for this too. Um, the ones that I ordered just haven't come in yet, but that's totally up to you. So this is uh, seated nicely. We've got it snug around the screw and that will finish up our wiring. We just have to put our little cover up here and then we can move on to our supply, our EVAP coil, and our transition. All right, so we're just gonna show you how easy this is to make our junction here. Simply slide the new one all the way till it's seated on the back. Lock it in place. Go to our main power wire. all the way in, lock it in place. And lastly, our ground wire. And it's literally that easy. Just put our face cover blank plate on and then we'll be moving on to the thermostat wire. So we're back here installing the new thermostat wire. We've got all these from the thermostat and our two from the condensing unit. So let's start with the C right here on the top. We're gonna to take one of our condensing unit wires and we're gonna take our blue from the thermostat. And what I like to do if I've got more than one wire is go ahead and twist these. Because sometimes if you don't twist them, uh, they could, one could come out and the other will stay so I think it's a good practice to just go ahead and wrap them together so common it's good and tight so next the other wire from the condensing unit is going to go to Y to signal a for the condenser to come on and yellow from the thermostat will also be a call for cool so we're going to wrap these two together And we're going to put these on the Y1 terminal. Just like that. Okay. Next, we'll move on to G, which if you remember was the green wire. That's for our fan. So we're going to connect that to G. Red will be our 24 volt supply. We're gonna connect that to R. And lastly, white is going to be, go to W. And that's going to be for our call for heat. All right, so those are all snugged up. get our wires situated here 
So the thermostat wires are good. We can go ahead and put our bottom cover on as well as our top cover. Once we start this unit up, we're gonna test the gas pressure, make sure everything is good. So we can go ahead and put these covers on for now. So our electrical, our gas, our return air, our thermostat wiring is all done. We are ready to get our uh, evaporator coil mounted. Now the easiest way to do this is we're actually gonna take this front cover off slip the actual coil out and then we're going to set our housing in place and build our transition so let's go ahead and start by removing this front cover and you don't need to remove these two corner screws just like that and now we'll just take these little foam pieces out so now this whole thing will just slide on out being careful not to bend any of our fins so we'll just set this aside and this is what we got so as we showed in the beginning of the video it does not matter if this is sitting directly on our right above the furnace. It's not going to damage the pan or anything. So this is the transition that we'll be left with. Should be pretty easy, pretty straightforward. So what we're gonna do to start is we're gonna silicone around our base right here. So we'll go ahead and set our Evaporated coal box on there, and then we'll see if we can't run a few zip screws in. So our box is mounted. You can see the top of this is a little bit loose because we have to attach our duct work here. Now what we're going to do is uh, prepare our existing uh, supply line with S-clip. Now if you don't know what that is, it's just this. Um, it looks like an S from the profile side. But basically this is going to slide up into here and then it will allow us to slide another piece of sheet metal into here and then on the bottom it'll be bent so we can put some zip screws in here so to do that we're just going to measure so we got 14 inches here and then we're going to measure this way our duct is 19 inches that way so we're going to cut two pieces of this at 19 and two at 14. we got two 14s and two 19s so we're simply going to take it, slip it on there just like that, put this one on the back side. And then our two side pieces. like that. So now we're ready to build our actual piece with sheet metal. So we're going to unspool our roll of sheet metal here and show you how to do that. All right, so we're going to start with this back piece right here. Now, as you can see, the right side is pretty much parallel with um, the, uh, the box for our evap coil. And this left side will have a little bit of a angle here. So we're going to measure this piece here. We've got 14 and a half. And then we're going to add two inches to that. And we'll show you why in just a second. So 15, 16 and a half. And then for the bottom, we've got 
14, so 15, 16. So from this to the top of the S clip, we've got, we're gonna give ourselves a little bit of room. So I'm gonna say five inches, and then we're gonna add an extra quarter inch. So five and a quarter for our height. So we're gonna go five and a quarter for the height on both sides. And then we had 16 here, and we're gonna go up to 16 and a half. There. So we're going to take a piece of S-clip, mark this out, here's my fancy tool, let it work. So there's our piece. All right, so next what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut out the edges here. And that's gonna make up for the uh, bend that we're about to put in this. And then what we'll do after that is we'll put our cross break in and that's gonna give this a little bit more rigidity. Now to do our cross break, we're actually gonna be using this little tool it's used for uh, rolling the little uh, rubber piece in windows, but it can actually make a really nice cross break without having to have a break. So we're simply gonna line up the corners here, hold it in place, and we're just gonna tr trace that line a few times. Then we're gonna go on this other side, line it up, holding this kind of at an angle like this, because you don't want this to get off track. And you end up with a perfect little break, just like that. This is gonna be our bottom here. So we're gonna bend these pieces in. Just like that. And that's what the S-lock will slip into. And now we're gonna bend this bottom piece in with the quarter inch side of our tool here. I'm gonna bend it in. And this is going to give us something to attach to our evaporator coil box. So we'll run our zip screws there, slide our S-clip in, and that'll accept the next piece. All right, so we're just gonna slide this in. Perfect. So that's how it's gonna fit. We'll run our two or three zip screws here, and then we'll put our S-clips on here. Next, we'll move on to this inside piece here. I'm gonna slip it right there into that S-lock. And then slide it on down and feed it into the S-lock over there. Just like that. All right, third side. We're gonna do the same thing, but in reverse order. So we're gonna take some pookie, seal everything up from the inside, build our last piece and it'll just slide in right here, making it easy if we ever have to remove that. So we're gonna take and we're gonna seal up all the corners here. And we're gonna seal up all of our S-clip as well. So 
believe we are all sealed up. And we're ready for the last piece, and then we can slip our coil back in, and we'll be good to go. And this new piece will slip into our S-clip. And then the two sides will slip in just like that. And all this is, is the coil has a little uh, notch right here and it'll slide into those two silver grooves there. Just like that. Boom. So now we can go ahead and put our covers back on. Something else that I like to do is I'll go ahead and put, rip a little bit of this off to where it goes back a little bit further. So when I put my cover on, I won't have to take it off again in order to solder this. I'll just put my rag here and it's not gonna catch this uh, insulation on fire. So let's go ahead and get our covers put back on. <clears throat> all right, so all of these evaporator coils come pre-charged with nitrogen so that you know there's no leaks in shipping and moving it around. And you don't wanna run the furnace with nitrogen in the system. So we're just gonna open this up since we're gonna be installing the AC side of this uh, tomorrow and we're gonna have their furnace going this evening. Um, we're just gonna let the nitrogen out and then it'll be ready for us tomorrow. So I usually just slowly open this and you'll start to hear the nitrogen come out in a minute. Now, if no nitrogen comes out, you know you have an issue. There could be a leak in shipping, so you'd wanna bring it back and get a new one. So while we let that drain out, we'll put our uh, piece on here. And our installation manual comes with those screws and a little baggie. This piece just attaches to the bottom here. And we'll run a few screws in to make sure it's not going anywhere. And we're gonna extend this to the right length. All right, so our venting is set in place. Um, everything is wrapped up. We're good to go ahead and turn the power back on here. And we'll go upstairs and flip our thermostat up to call for heat. And we'll check and make sure everything's working like it should.